Hey, good morning, everybody. KD2TFJ. Um, I wanted to do a video at least two or three times a week um, on my ham radio adventures. Um, and the reason why I want to do that is because I want to inform as much as I can new people that want to get into the hobby. And also, I want to make some um, videos so that people have a consistent um, point of in information so that they can follow um, some of my um, techniques and some of my ideas. Um, one thing I know about being a ham radio um, operator now is that a lot of operators tend to give good information to other new hams or prospective hams that want to get into the hobby so that they know or see what to do now in the present. Most of the videos that I've seen online right now, no matter where you go, it's very old. Most of the videos that I've seen are a year plus, and most of them are at least four years and older. Not that many are new. I know there's probably another guy, I forgot his name, he's out, is, a, is probably doing some new videos as of now, but that's... That's about it. So me and probably another few people at the most are doing current videos to help out the new incoming hams that might want to get into the hobby or hams that probably took the test already and just got into doing the hobby. Um, so I wanted to make a few informative videos so people that are in the hobby, that want to get into the hobby, have some kind of reference point to see, okay... This is what I do when I get my license. These are the radios I should um, probably get into using. Um, how to make your first contact over um, simplex frequencies or on a repeater. And so, um, I, as of this point, I have yet to get um, any contact on a repeater out where I am right now. I am constantly checking the repeaters out here to see if there's any chit chat. And one of the things that might be uh, um, an issue is I'm using my uh, walkie-talkies right now. Uh, this is, of course, my Baofeng UV82. This is an 8-watt radio. Um, I do have my um, Anytone um, um, AT778 UV, but the only thing is I have yet to get a power supply for um, a household and my vehicle is still being uh, repaired so I'm not able to actually fully utilize that as a base station or a mobile unit yet um, I am going to start once I get my 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 van hooked up and everything I'm going to more than likely buy another Anytone 778 so I have a base station and also my mobile station because it's actually good for both um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start driving around New Jersey, New York area, even Connecticut, and I'm going to start to do videos of me going around to different locations, getting on different repeaters, and seeing if I'm able to make a contact outside of the New York City in general area. Um, New York City, you know, doesn't have that much chatter on the repeaters right now. Typically what happens is most older older hams or um, hams that's been on, on, you know, out there for a long time, they typically only come on certain times of the week. You know, some people are working, so most of the time you might get some more chatter at night um, and or on the weekends or when they have a net. Um, a net is when um, mostly... It's going to be a radio club, a ham radio club, that um, either has either one repeater that they use in a general area, or they have a bunch of different repeaters that are linked together and in a certain area. It could be one, it could be more. Um, and what they do is they come in they at a certain date and time, and everybody typically checks in. They talk about current events, um, uh, uh club information or and they also of course allow um non-club members 
get in on the action, given their call sign, their location, and, you know, just a hi and how y'all all doing just to, uh, you know, know who's out there. And, you know, Q&A, questions and answers about radio equipment, uh, walkie-talkie, whatever you have. And, um, and it's a good way to get to know who's out there in your general area. Sometimes they have a bigger net where it's a huge footprint area. Um, I know some that probably have more than five repeaters, and they could be linked in an area over 50, 60 miles, and you can talk to a bunch of people. That's typically outside of city areas. Typically, that's out in the rural areas where it's more open space. Um, propagation is very good, and um, there's always you know a bunch of repeaters out spaced out on hilltops and that also helps propagation and you could get a whole lot of people in that net. Um, I haven't been a part of one yet. Um, some nets um, are closed in a sense, um, not really um, closed. It's more or less um, they have certain um, tones that certain radios are not able to use. Um, and so I'm not able to use these radios to get into the net that is in my area. Um, one net I know is on the Kings County Radio Club, KCR, uh, KC2RC, which is one of the biggest um, radio clubs in New York City. Um, and they do have a net, but I haven't been able to do it because they are on Yesu radios. Um, and those radios have a, a certain way of um, mixing, and I don't have it. Uh, I, I would have to get a Yesu radio in order to do that um, or a radio that can um, mix. I, I can't remember how that that works. I'm new at this, so I'm learning as I go. Um, so one thing I wanted to go over is um, making contacts. Um, a lot of people are not really sure how to make a contact on the radio, and I see that a lot. Um, I have spoke to a few people on Simplex, 2 meter Simplex, which is more active than um, the 70 centimeter, um, but it's not hard. Don't be scared to get on the radio and give out your name, uh, your call sign and your name, um, what you're interested in, how you feel about being a ham radio operator, um, simple stuff like that. You know, I spoke to a few people on Simplex and it's not... You know, it's not a scary place. It's a very friendly um, hobby. It, it doesn't have to be um, scary. And um, most people that I talking, to, I spoke to, and I've heard over the radio over the air, are very friendly, and they are more than welcoming to new hams that want to get into a conversation. Just be able to get in contact with them. Know that you're close enough to talk to them. Um, um, have a good antenna so that you can transmit good. And uh, most of the time, like if you're in a house, get an external antenna so that even if you're using a walkie-talkie like this, you can use your use the outside antenna so that you can get your inf um, your transmission out and also receive better. Um, stop! Don't ever use. This is another thing. This is informative. Don't use your walkie-talkie inside a house and really think that you're going to get that much um, transmission out of the out of your house or building. Um, walls, metal, and other things like that typically hinder um, transmissions, especially FM. Um, AM bands are easier to go through things and around things. FM bands aren't. And that's another thing that you will learn as being a, a radio technician is you learn different modulations. And AM, although it's an older uh, modulation, we don't really use it as much, but it goes through things a hell of a lot more easy than FM does. FM typically keeps the sound very good over a distance, 
But the problem is it doesn't go through things as easily. So the best thing to do if you want to make contacts and you have a walkie-talkie to start off with, it's easier to get a walkie-talkie. It's easier, you know, it's cheaper than buying a, a, a base station or a mobile radio that might cost a hundred plus dollars. Now you can get radio walkie-talkies that are that price range, but it's more functionality than um, than actual transmission um i guess you could say because transmission no matter how more, how expensive your radio is is not going to go through a, a concrete metal building or layers of wood if you're living in a house that stuff hinders your transmission and receives receiving transmissions so if you are going to go with a walkie-talkie for your first um, way of kind of of using ham radios get an external antenna get a, a a table next to a window or whatever get that antenna high up out your house or building if you have a fire escape put it safely on a fire escape with a mag mount or whatever you can do if it's if it's safe put it on a on a fire escape like I did I put mine on a fire escape in my my room I don't have a table in there yet. I will be getting a table in there so that I can set up my base station in there and um, have the radio antenna on the outside of the building so now it's outside. Now it's free to send out information and receive information and you will notice a huge difference in your transmissions out and your receiving transmission in. Um, so that's one thing to remember. But... Um, if you're outside with your walkie-talkie, make sure you get a longer antenna so that you can um, get more distance because small antennas typically are going to go straight out and it's not going to really go up and around anything. So the longer antenna, better um, when it comes to transmission, especially in a city area like I am in where you have hundreds of buildings and housing and telephone poles and trees, one thing we do have a lot of. Um, and so that's another thing to, to remember. Um, another thing to remember is, um, get a good radio that has, um, I would say dual banding. Um, my radio is a dual band radio, which means, um, I can listen into two different frequencies at the same time. Um, so let's say I want to hear a repeater, one repeater on one frequency or whatever, and I want another another frequency. Or I want to scan on a bunch of frequencies on another uh, at the same time. You can do that. You can scan one free one um, VFO at the same time as another as you're listening to another. So what that does is give you more um, possibility of making contacts. Um, you might hear something on a frequency and you jump up. Oh, okay. That's on this one. How you doing guys? Um, I'm listening in and that's the best thing. Always give your call sign. I'm listening in KD2 TFJ listening in only when there's a pause. Let's say they're having a conversation and you want to jump in there because you're hearing people talking in your area and you want to jump on. Like even I have wanted to just jump in there. I'm like, oh, I'm hearing people talking and I want to jump in, but they're not giving me a break to get in. Wait, they're there. Just give it a few minutes. They might pause for a few minutes. Then you get in there. KD2, TFJ, your call sign. Um, don't use anybody else's, please. I'm just using mine, of course. But use your call sign. Say listening in. Put your radio down. Let them hear you. Acknowledge you. Or uh, they might just say, hey, how you doing? Uh, yeah, so where are you at? Sometimes they might break to let you talk. and Or they might say, um, they'll come back with your call sign and say, we acknowledge you, which means they hear you. They, they know that you're there. That they might be finishing up a conversation that they were already in, and um, then they'll come back to you. Don't be worried about getting in there. Don't be over excited or zealous to jump into a conversation and make a contact with people. Be be patient. They'll get in contact with you. Um, one thing I always I said it in one of my other videos is to always monitor, even if you're not a licensed ham radio operator yet. 
if you're getting into it and you're watching videos trying to find out how this thing works, get a walkie-talkie or even yourself a base station if you really want to spend the money to jump in there to base station or mobile radio. Get into listening into conversations in your area. Even if you're just learning this, you'll learn how people talk over the radio. You'll learn how to use your call sign, the alphanumeric. You'll learn how to use um, the etiquette of ham radio. It's just like if you had a CB radio, Citizens Van Radio Service. If you had a CB, you'll listen in to how people are talking over the radio and then you'll go into, okay, now I know a little bit of how to use a radio. Any radio service, always listen in prior to even transmitting. That's one thing that I love to tell people. Don't just, oh, okay, I'm learning how to do the, 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 the test. You're studying for the test. Jump into taking the test, passing the test, and now you're getting yourself into the radios and then you're automatically transmitting. I don't do it. I, I would not recommend it that way. I would recommend you hopping on to getting a, 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 a cheaper radio that works, getting into listening into it, and doing the test at the same time. What I used to do, I used to watch videos of the test prep, taking test prep on my phone using the apps that they have. Um, the ARRL have a, 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 a test app that you can use. And I was always listening to my radio. And I have my radio, I have my, my, my tablet, and my cell phone, and I'm doing all three at the same time. I'm watching the video, I'm taking a test, and I'm also listening into the radio to see if anybody's starting to talk. And at nighttime, people getting home from work, and you might hear somebody on the air, on two meter um, simplex. Listening to the conversation, listening how they work and how, it, how they talk in and what they're talking about, and also taking the test, all those, all three of those things work. Watching videos of test prep, taking test prep on your own, and also listening into other ham stations that already been on the air for a while, already had their tests done years ago, or even even new hams that are on the air. You can hear how they're talking on the air, how they're talking to a uh, uh, more of a um, uh, experienced ham that's how you get into it so those are the few tricks of learning how to get into ham radio um, I don't have any contacts right now that I can talk to to make a um, you know a good video on talking to uh, other hams I'm gonna try now on my two meter um, as everybody sees, um, that's my two meter band at the top and at the bottom, that's a repeater that I usually um, listen into to see if anybody is there. Um, I haven't heard anybody over that repeater in a while, so I just keep on going through repeaters. So I'm gonna go over the air real quick now to see if I can hear it, if anybody is on the two meter band. KD2 TFJ listening in, mobile. In the morning, it's going to be hard to find anybody. And I'm going to go over the repeater now. So, like I told you in my previous videos, always check the repeater to see if it's connecting. So, as you can hear, that's how I can tell the repeater. is on. I'm going to let it beep because I know I'm the first person, probably the first person to hit the repeater just now. So, I'll, wait a few, I'll usually wait a few seconds or about a minute to let the repeater beep because... Usually when you hit the repeater, it's going to do its chirp um, so that you, it identifies itself to being on. And sometimes I'm, you might not get it because it might have already did its repeater um, thingy. I'm not sure what it's called. I know it's identifier when it does its beeping. That do 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 that's, I, that's the uh, repeater's information. Um, if you know Morse code, it's a way to find out the repeater information. All right, so I'm going to go over the air for the repeater. KD2TFJ, I'm listening in, in Kings County. Any other station on the air?
See, now that repeater is very close. So it's, I think, 2.5 kilometers from here. And that's just a little bit over a mile and a half, if I'm correct, in, in U.S. terms, which I don't really like to use. Um, I know it's just about two miles or so. So it's 2.3 kilometers from here. And that's not far at all. So I know I can reach it from inside. Is it great to use it inside? No, but you can use it. So as you can see, nobody is on the air. Um, when I do hear somebody on the air, I will definitely do a video where I am making my first contact over the repeater. Um, I have made a few contacts over the simplex channels, which is closer. Um, not a lot of people are on the repeaters right now, but I will. I do travel around and I do check the repeaters when I go to New Jersey. Like if I'm in Newark, I jump on their repeaters out there um, and out uh, in New Jersey. So when I when I do make a contact over the repeater, I definitely will be making a video about that. Um, and if you have any other questions, any suggestions, any hams that's been on the air for a longer period of time, of course, and any new hams, I am open to either or. Um, I can give some new hams or hams that are studying some pointers from what I did, and I can also help out with um, 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 any other hams that might want to know how to get into um, the radio um, service. Um, thank you for watching. Like and um, subscribe, and um, have a beautiful day.